Is this thing recording? Is this thing on? Is this thing on? What's up, guys? Welcome back to All The Gear and No Idea Podcasts. Uh, today, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to be talking to nobody. I'm going to be talking to myself, uh, basically talking to you guys out there. We'll see how this goes. Um, see if anyone uh, likes this version of the podcast. So what I'm thinking... Um, well, basically, I should have done this podcast, this this episode. I should have done this episode uh, from the get-go. should have had this as episode one. Um, just a little bit about me and this podcast. But basically, um, yeah, this podcast, I want to bring creative people together or chat to creative people and people that are inspiring and people that are doing really cool shit out there. Um, it doesn't have to be anything specific. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. Uh, Just as long as it's good, inspiring, um, cool stuff, Um, in my opinion, if if I get you on the podcast, then I personally think that you're doing something really amazing. Um, But yeah, you don't have to be a photographer or a videographer, you don't have to be a musician, you you can be anything, you can be an artist, a painter, you can be a graphics designer, you could be a photographer that works for a, a major company. I would love to, you know, hear your story and how you got into it and how things happen. And things like that. And also about me, I'm a photographer. I've been a photographer now for about five to six years. I don't know about the word professionally, but I have been getting paid now professionally for about three and a half years. Now I'm doing weddings a lot more, uh, more and more every week. Sometimes, you know, we go from one to three a week. Um, Those are pretty big weeks. I also do some photos for uh, other companies and things like that, some editing and also my YouTube. And now that travel's back, it's been back for a while, but now that travel's fully back in force, ready to rumble, yeah, I'm going to do a lot more traveling um, with my photography and with this podcast and bringing the podcast um, overseas. So bringing all the gear and hopefully bringing some idea (laughs) to um, people around the world that are doing really cool things, people that I've met um, over Instagram, over YouTube, link up with them, hear their story. Cause yeah, I love to be inspired and things like that. I like to, um, basically hear how people got to where they are. Um, see where, you know, basically from nothing to something. Um, and also, you know, I want to hear what's in the future as well. Like, um, you know, just because you're talking to me on the podcast doesn't mean, you know, there's not, there's, there's um, no more growth or anything like that but that's basically the podcast that's basically about me most of you who are listening because I don't think anybody listens to this podcast just yet but most of you who are listening probably know who I am uh, and know a little bit about me but yeah so let's get into this little episode this is the first time I'm doing it right now I feel a little bit weird talking to myself I'm literally looking to to a wall but that's probably whenever I talk to anyone anyway, they're probably looking back at me like what the hell is this going on about. So, but yeah, also to bring it back to the weddings, man, I am sunburnt. I did a wedding last week, well, last week, like four days ago, out in the sun, ceremony was 10.30 in the morning, there was no clouds, it was sunny as hell, and I am burnt as fuck, like I'm so sunburnt, I'm dripping in aloe vera, like I'm drenched in it, like I've got it on all time when I'm sleeping, Right after showers, like all time, this I can't get enough of this stuff. But this sunburn is killing me. Like I'm, I'm starting to peel. How gross! Also, just before I get fully into the podcast or into this episode, I really want to shout out Sigma Australia. So shout out for Sigma Australia for supporting me and and everything all these years. Um, they are amazing. Get behind them. Follow them on Instagram, guys. Sigma Australia or Sigma in general. Um, amazing company to work with and, and also, you know, be in that community. So shout out to them. Um, just because they literally sent me a brand new 35 mil 1.4, um, for my Canon. I'm a Canon operator. Um, but yeah, shout out to them. I love the 35. The reason why they sent me a new one, cause me, the idiot dropped my 35, like nine months ago, dropped downstairs It was literally rolling downstairs in slow motion and I was just watching it just roll down each step. It looked like a slinky, just going down, 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 down. And I couldn't do anything about it. Uh, It didn't look broken when I picked it up because I picked it up and I started taking photos with it a little bit and it didn't look like anything was wrong. Like I 
did the eye check over it and stuff like that, the eyeball test, and and you know it looked it looked pretty good, just running an eye over it. But little did I know when I took it home and looked at all the photos, they were fucked. They were trash. They were so out of focus. I didn't know what was going on. I actually thought it was my photography. I thought I was trash that day. But basically, um, I didn't do anything about it because I already had another 35 uh, from another company that I'd use. Um, but obviously, it wasn't as good as the Sigma um, 35. But anyway, I used that other 35 for a while. I had I have other lenses and things like that. So it wasn't like... Um, it wasn't, you know, ruining... It, it wasn't wrecking anything or like... It wasn't stopping me from taking photos or anything like that with other lenses and and, and things like that. But basically, uh, I told Sigma about the story, what happened. They said, send it down here. We'll get it fixed for you. It should be a couple of weeks. And then a couple of weeks go by. I get a brand new package, brand new lens. And I go, oh, what is this? Brand new. Basically, Sigma said the 35 that I broke was fucked. Like, it was ruined. So, they couldn't even fix it. Well, they could fix it, but it probably just better to just send me a new one. So, shout out to those guys. I really, really appreciate it. You guys are absolutely amazing. All right. So, now on this podcast, guys. Also, if you can hear like a lawnmower or like some guy drilling outside, I do apologize. It always happens. Anyone out there that's, um, you know, re- anyone out there that record YouTube videos at home or record anything and they're every time every time i could be at home all day not doing anything i decide to make a youtube video and this fucking jim mowings guy just jim's mowing ruins it for everyone he just comes out of nowhere and starts mowing cutting grass or some guy comes with a fucking drill and starts drilling something it's always at the wrong time shout out to them but if you can hear that guys sorry about that one thing i wanted to get into actually was um just yesterday canon released well, I don't know if they released it because uh, I went onto a website to try and get it uh, or look it up and um, it said that it's on pre-order. So I don't know exactly when it comes out, but they just have announced that they are bringing out or brought out the Canon EOS R6 Mark II. I, if you know me, I use the R6. Uh, I only bought that like uh, maybe half a year ago or maybe a year ago now I've had it. So they did me dirty. They brought out the new R6 Mark II. I could have, if I knew, I would have waited. But I will probably buy it. Probably buy it after Japan. Because I still love my R6. It does the job. Um, let me go to the specs here. Let me go to the uh, the website. I won't get too much into it. But basically, I'm on the Canon website here. What have we got here? Uh, high quality, 24.2 megapixel. So basically same megapixels as the RP, fast shooting speeds up to 40 frames per second, um, sweet as, advanced subject tracking, that's pretty cool, um, I reckon that'd be pretty cool during weddings, especially if they're like, you know, walking down the aisle, I guess pretty fast and people are throwing confetti or, um, I mean, that's, that's basically how I see the tracking for me, cool, cool, there's other things here that I don't really care about, this one thing here, I don't know how it works. Now, I probably... Again, this is all the gear, no idea type of podcast. All right, guys. So this is why the podcast is called All the Gear, No Idea. But basically, it says here, never miss a critical moment with up to five seconds pre-recording before pressing the record button and improve continuous recording times of up to six hours. Look, I, I don't know how this works or how technology works. How the fuck does it co- record five seconds before you press record? Like, is it always recording all the time? Or like, what, what, I don't get that. Like, if someone knows, someone DM me to tell me the answers. Because I ain't got the answers, so I, yeah, but basically, yeah, I, I don't fucking have the answers for that. Someone can tell me that because, you know, all the gear, no idea over here. But pretty cool, man. Like, I, I, I'll probably, I'll definitely get this after Japan. I'll see some reviews on it when people start making videos on it and things like that. It's not too expensive. Um, I'm pretty sure... Let me press pre-order. Uh, pre-order. Uh, where to buy? Body only. Let me go to the homies. Did you see what they got to say? All right. Did you... Oh, yeah. That's all right. So, it's... Uh, if you're talking Australian dollars, you're looking at about 4300 um, for just the body. 
So if you are already a Canon operator and you've already got all your lenses and all the gear and more idea than I do, then yeah, it, it it's not that expensive. I, I guess it's like a thousand dollars, a little bit. Yeah, it's a thousand dollars less than the R5. I wonder if they're going to make an R5 Mark II. Uh, but basically, yeah, I think it's worth it, especially if you are a Canon operator and you love Canon. Um, if you've already got the R6, I'd probably, well, what I'm going to do is, I don't know if I'm giving away my secrets, but I'll probably use it a couple more months, wait till Japan's finished, see how I go, see with the reviews on the uh, Mark II R6. Uh, and I'll probably sell my R6, so if anyone is in the market of buying a, a secondhand R6, hit me up when I do sell it. But yeah, I will probably buy one and I've got all the lenses and everything like that for it. So I'm not really spending too much more money uh, on a new camera. It's a little bit different if you're buying a whole new setup, then you're fucked. All right, then you've got um, then you've got lots and lots of money to hand over. So yeah, good luck with that. You're going to be losing a lot of coin if you've got a new setup. Which everyone, well not everyone, but a lot of people that are Sony, they always looking at me and said, yeah, one day you're going to switch over to Sony. So um, yeah, we'll see about that. But I doubt it because I really want to get this um, R6 Mark II. The only reason why I really want to get it, and this is just me personally, is like the megapixels on it. Like I'm really, because I really like taking photos with the RP. The RP um, is 24 megapixels and like, yeah, I, I, I personally think the RP is really, really good for like value or money. Like it's $1,700, I think, brand new just for the body uh it's a great camera especially for someone that's starting out even someone that's like kind of professional i guess it's a really good camera so i'm happy that the r6 mark ii has gone up with the megapixels i'm all about megapixels a lot of people aren't they don't really care but i am i'm a megapixel operator so you know judge me all you want you know look down at me if you want but yeah i i really really like this um r6 mark ii so we'll see i want to see a couple of reviews if anyone's made a review on it please send it to me also, I'm recording this video the day after they have made the announcement of the R6 Mark II. So, I will probably release this video next week. So, it'll probably be a week a week from when it got released. So, it's probably old news to everyone that listens to this. Um, new news to me right now. But uh, if you love Canon, you'll love it too. Uh, let me look at here. What's going on here? So, with a wide selection of recording formats ranging from 4K, 60 p full hd 180p as well as a raw movie as well as raw movie when recording to an external storage device mm, all right cool cool no that's cool happy about that all righty cool cool oh next thing guys let me get my phone so one thing i did on my story uh last night um was i wanted people to ask me some questions because i'm gonna like I guess, answer some questions on the potty. I think this might be like a, uh, a weekly or a fortnightly type of thing where I'll put on my story, ask me some questions, whatever it is, I don't really care. Funnier, the better. Um, the more serious, the better. I don't care. Anything, anything is good. All right, any questions is good questions, I guess. Basically, I want one good question. I'm going to give you one good answer. What's good is I going to give you? All right, guys. And um, I'll shout you guys out and things like that, um, depending on uh, if I can even pronounce like your name or like your um, handle. So sorry, guys. Um, English is not my first language. All right, cool, cool. Let me let me have a look here and let's see where where everyone's at. All right, this is a good one. This is actually from my partner Amanda. Um, I did not ask her to say to ask me this question. But um, why are you so good looking? Uh, I guess it's just my genes, you know. But no, no, she didn't ask that. Um, so her question literally was, why did you start your podcast? Um, Amanda, I live with you. Um, I, maybe I haven't even told you. But basically, the reason why I started the podcast was I really like talking to people. Now, I'll probably just explain this on the reason why I started at the start of the podcast. I probably explain this, but like to get into it a little bit more, I really just want to get to know people that are really doing cool things and cool things to, to my standard, I guess. Yeah. Anyone that's inspirational or anyone that's, um, doing something that's different, like, and you know, nothing against anyone else, um, you know, with normal jobs or 
even, you know, you could be a CEO of a company. Nothing against that. It's just people that are doing something maybe that's not traditional, you know, like I started photography at 27. I didn't think I'd be doing what I'm doing now. So like it's it's a cool journey from what I'm on. Um, so I think it's a cool journey with everyone else, everyone else that are, that's doing amazing things out there. Yeah, I really want to hear your story. And I love talking to people. I love shooting the shit with people, talking, you know, talking smack, um, basically. And uh, you know, that's what I do with the boys day in and day out. We literally talk about nothing. Like, there's some days, I remember when, like, when the homie Mitch Lally, he went to uh, Italy and he came back from Italy and uh, he'd been gone for like a month. Now, with Mitch, I see this guy nearly... Twice a week, I would probably see him. I'll see him about twice a week. Maybe three, maybe four. But it's usually twice a week I see this guy. So, yeah, I can't get enough of him. But basically, he goes to Italy. I don't see the guy for a month. A little bit different. When he gets back, we sat, sit down, have a coffee and brekkie, um, things like that. And then that night, I see a man and she goes, Oh, how's Mitch? Like, what do you guys talk about? I don't even remember. I don't know what we talked about. She goes, how was Italy? And I go, oh, yeah, that's right. I asked him, you know, how was he? He said it was good. And I said, all right, sweet. So we went on to the next subject. Um, so that's as, that we talk a lot of shit, so much shit that I even forget about what we're talking about. But but that's why I wanted to start the podcast. It's just talk shit with people that are doing really, really cool things. So uh, thanks, Amanda, for that one. This one's from uh, a good friend, uh, Julian. Um, so his Instagram, um, is Julian O R dot T I Z. He's a really good photographer. He's from Sydney. I think he moved up to Brisbane. He might've moved back down to Sydney. Not to tell everyone your story, bro, but basically you're a good man. Favorite. His question is favorite photo location so far. I have many, I have many in Australia. I even have many in my back, backyard here in, in, in Brisbane and Queen and, uh, Gold Coast. Too many, too many to choose from. Let me go through my Instagram. But from the top of my head, I'd say I'll give you two answers. The one place I at at that time was like a couple months ago in the states. At that time, my a place I really, really, really wanted to take photos was the Golden Gate Bridge. I do not know why. It's everyone takes photos of it. It isn't like a place where you need to travel far to, or you have to hike or it's it's hidden or anything like that it's it's just a bridge anyone can go to it anyone can take a photo of it it's not hard you can literally drive up to it drive through it it is a bridge um there's many angles you can do it from the bay you can do it from um i guess the mountain behind it that was one place i really it's like i needed to take that photo um so that that was really cool the other place is probably my yeah right now to this day to this day, my favorite place is uh, Bonville Salt Flats in Utah. Um, if you look at my gram, I've got quite a fair few photos from there. We took the Jeep on there, took the girls on there, did some modeling shots, uh, made a couple of YouTube videos. So, absolutely favorite place, I reckon, at the moment for taking photos. And that day, the day that we went there was absolutely amazing. Like, it was unreal. Great weather. Um, I've seen actually, like photos of it where it's like it's not salt flats it's like water um i would be pissed if i went there and it was water like i'd be i'd be off my chops i had it had a gut full that's what i'd have i'd hate it but yeah we got great weather it was awesome all right this one here is um oh from this dude his instagram handle is b-r-y-n-h-l-n brian yeah, so this is from Brian, B-R-Y-N, Brian. Um, he's, got a, he's got a cool question. He goes, what is some advice for someone with... Uh, uh, what, is, what, is some advice for, what is some advice for someone with no or little gear and no idea? That's me, bro. <laughs> I have gear and I have no idea. Some advice, uh, depending on what you have, you know... In regards to gear, I don't think it matters whether you've got one lens, you know, one camera, one lens. Um, I don't care if you've got six cameras and 25 lenses. Yeah, like when I first started taking 
uh, for photos. I, I had the um, 35 Sigma Art, the 1.4 with my RP. Uh, oh, that's that's when I first started like taking photography seriously. Like before then I had like the Fuji X-T2 and this old school Nikon like D4400 or some shit like that. But that was literally when I had no idea and no gear. But let's say you're happy with what you got now. Um, and you're still doing it as a hobby. One piece of advice is don't worry about having the best gear. Don't worry about having the newest stuff. I think someone told me like a couple of weeks ago, like, which is really, really cool advice is like, if you want to buy new stuff or new gear, new photography stuff or anything to do with like your passion or your hobby or what you want to do as a job, is buy what you can afford don't try and buy the most expensive don't try to buy the best don't try and buy the cheapest buy what you can afford and once you buy what you can afford learn that to the max learn that certain thing and use that thing until there is no more learning to do like just use it as much as possible and just shoot everything if you're a photographer sh- you know, shoot as much as you can. Don't stop shooting. I was shooting all the time. I work. I used used to work full time for a company, Monday to Friday, um, nine hour days, thirty minute breaks, and then right after work, if it was summer, and there was still a bit of light left, I'd go out, message someone, and say, "Hey, let's go take some photos." On the weekends, I'd have photo shoots lined up, and I was doing everything for free. I wasn't asking anyone for money. I wasn't asking anyone for free things. And um, yeah, I just was shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting all the time. I just didn't stop taking photos. And then I started, I guess, meeting other people in the same world, connecting with them, hanging out with them, just going out, taking photos um, with these other photographers. One of my good mates, Cedric, I literally DM'd him. I just said, bro, your photos are pretty cool. Um, I have no fucking clue about photos or anything like that. Let's meet up. So we met up and like that guy's like one of my best friends to this day. But not only is he like one of my best friends and things like that, it's because like we network together and like we we hung out and we learn things off each other. Um, I'm pretty sure he was using like an Olympus camera back then. Now he's onto Sony. So we like, you know, we grew together. Um, so that's one advice is, you know, learn your, learn your gear and also meet other photographers, network, message people. Yeah. Well, I remember when I met you, bro, um, Brian, I met you at Great Ocean Road. You were on the beach taking photos and I went up to you and I said, Hey dude, what are you shooting on? And then, yeah, um, that's how I got your Instagram. Uh, but yeah, good question, man. Thank you so much for that one. What else do we have here? Uh, this one's from someone in canada so their instagram's 50 50 underscore photography uh we actually message each other quite a bit um this question is when are you coming to canada again and coming to ontario well i've never been to canada so there is no again um there will be for the first time i've never been to canada i want to go to canada uh, i was really jealous of the boys that went to canada earlier this year so that was um tavis the homie tavis the homie mitch and uh tk so they were in canada i wasn't i had to fly back home because i had about a thousand weddings um they were unreal those weddings but uh yeah really jealous of those guys um when i'm coming to canada and ontario i reckon i'll come it'll either be next year or the year after because i really really want to do canada i really want to go there for maybe three weeks um i want to go to toronto um there's some people some photographers there that i've messaged before so um that we could link up with them i'll try and get to ontario as well but yeah thanks for that question this one is this one's from a a good mate sneaker daddy shout out to sneaker daddy's sneaker zaddy he's he's one of my great mates he says uh, his question is what is your personal definition of success that's, that's a good question because I actually think uh, once um, someone thinks that they're, they're successful, 
I don't think it's a really good thing. You can be successful, but I just just don't think that that's it. All right, don't try to be successful. I'm I'm very big on small goals instead of big goals. Like you want big goals, but I like to work small goals before I work on to the big goals. All the small goals when I'm ticking them off leads to the big goal. And again, every day is different and everything happens for a reason. So like you might have like these small goals going on over months and months and months or like days and weeks and blah, blah, blah. And you're about to get to the big goal and something else happens. Something comes into your life and you're like, oh, wow, like I really like to do this and this is what's happened. And, you know, I met this person or I met this other creative or I um, met this other person that's in my field that's going to make me do something else or I've been inspired. So um, that's why the big goals for me, they're there. Um, but I, I want to make sure that, um, small goals get ticked off, uh, on the way. I'm not sure if that answers your, your question of the definition of success, but just because you're hella rich or just because you're not worried about money or your um, you, you finally reached the big goal. Don't think that like you're successful or anything like that because you should keep working all the time yeah so like for example like i really learned how to do photography like i tried my hardest to like get that down pat now i don't think i'm the best photographer out there but i think i'm pretty decent i think i know what i'm doing with it and when i felt like that i i started something new so i started to do youtube and now i'm starting to do this podcast so i guess if i felt successful at being a photographer and I was like all right cool like that's the definition of success I've done it I'm great people hire me now to be a wedding photographer people want me to do their restaurant photos people want me to do their portraits people want me to travel to like this certain country to take photos like that didn't just because like I get all those things and like people like know about me now that doesn't stop me from going all right I'm going to do YouTube now or I'm going to do this podcast now or I might start focusing on videography next. So, um, yeah, don't stop, basically. That's that's an, another advice. Don't stop. Keep going. Keep doing different things. Yeah, good question, brother. All right, let me have a look here. This one's from a friend, Alex. Um, Alex XOX and like three underscores or something like that. Could be 25 underscores. Um, she's a good good friend. Uh, her question is, do you know when to switch off and be present in life or do you always feel the need to capture it on camera? It's a good question. Sometimes as a creative and I guess sometimes I just can't help myself basically. Like I'll tell myself, all right, cool. We're, um, we're, we're at this, in this city at the moment. We're here for about four days. Um, I really know that I want to take photos at this spot. I really know I want to make a YouTube video blah 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 um so like i kind of plan it out and things like that but there's just some days where i just can't fucking help myself i just want to pick up the camera and just start taking photos oh my god because in my mind i know i'm not going to be there again anytime soon you know especially if it's another country like in the states we were in most cities like only three days maybe four days the most we actually stayed in san francisco an extra night because it was we really liked being in that city um but yeah sometimes you just can't help yourself i always bring my camera with me I'll either bring the whole setup or I might just bring the camera in one lens um, just so I'm not lugging, you know, carrying around heaps of gear. But basically, uh, to answer your question, probably not. I probably don't... Uh, well, okay. When it's nighttime, because I do not take any nighttime photography. I hate taking nighttime stuff. Nothing against it. Some of the best nighttime photographers I'm friends with. So I love their work. But that's just not me. But yeah, so maybe that's that's when I uh, switch off and um, I'm present in life. Also, I like to go out and have dinner and have a beer with all the homies and all, all our friends and stuff like that. So that's what we'll probably be doing in Japan. So that's one reason why I'm really excited about being in Japan for about six to seven weeks is that there's going to be days where I'm going to focus on my photography, focus on the YouTube, focus on the podcast. And there's going to be other days where I'm just going to be like, hey, let's uh, go shopping. Let's um, stuff our faces at Lawson's, you know, let's get fat, you know, and then walk it off you know make sure my steps are steps are getting up in my um you know my app so shit like that so i'm keen thanks for that alex um i'll try and be more present in life 
another one here is from a good friend. I've never met this guy. I'd say he's a good internet friend. I, I am going to meet up with him in Japan. I think it's going to be in Tokyo. His name's Phil. Um, Phil T. Fournier. Sorry if I didn't pronounce that right, bro. Um, I'll buy you a beer if I don't. What is the first YouTube video you're going to shoot when you get to Tokyo? I have a few videos planned. I don't know when I'm going to shoot them. It all depends on like weather and stuff like that. But basically the first one I want to do is I might roam around Tokyo uh, with Amanda and just filming um, the city, filming the streets, taking photos of Amanda in nice cool places. Just have nice music over the video, I guess. Um, but that'll probably be the first one. It won't be really about anything. Like, obviously, I'm going to be using the R6 and, like, maybe maybe a 35 or a 50 to do the whole thing. Um, but it won't be like, hey, guys, I'm taking photos on this certain camera or anything like that. But um, I really want to make more chilled videos in, in Tokyo and in Japan in general, which I feel like I do already. Um, but at the moment, I'm really focusing on this podcast and... I would love everyone's support on the podcast. So if you are listening right now on Spotify, there is like a star system. So rate it five stars, guys. It's kind of like Uber. When you're done with the podcast, give me five stars. And um, it means that I can make more podcasts. Alrighty. So this podcast currently is going for like 30 minutes. Uh, what other questions do I have here from the homies? This is another one. This is from uh, Alex as well. She says, what is an what is an accomplishment you are proud of so far with being a photographer? Good question. Uh, I have the, I'm actually pretty proud of just where I am now. Like I don't work full time. I mean, I work harder now than when I worked full time because I'm more responsible now for like my income and like I don't get sick leave. I don't get annual leave. You know, for example, when I'm going, when we're going to Japan, like I don't get paid at all. I get paid other ways, but like I don't have like a certain amount coming in every week through annual leave, things like that. Um, but yeah, I am uh, really proud, I guess, of where I am at the moment. I am doing what I love and um, I love what I'm doing. I'm getting to be more creative. I'm getting to explore like other things, like now doing the podcast. Uh, I travel a lot more now. Basically, before I did photography, the most, the longest I've ever spent anywhere on a holiday was was two weeks two weeks here two weeks there two weeks some places some place even one week um when we went to the states earlier this year the longest that, that was the longest i'd ever been away was three weeks um and then this time it'll be seven weeks so like i feel like i'm really proud of that like i've never been overseas for a long period of time this will be the longest period of seven weeks so I'm very proud of myself to be able to have this type of lifestyle. I'm very important on lifestyle. I'm not very, like, yeah, I need money to eat, but I'm very important. Um, you know, I need money for rent. I need money to buy all the gear. You can't buy any idea. I'm very, my lifestyle, I'm happy with my lifestyle. Okay, I'm doing this podcast, basically. It's it's a Thursday, and um, yeah, I'm doing it on my time, So, which is really, really cool. All right, I might do one more question, and... Uh, we might be done. Let's see here. Uh, this is from from the homie, uh, from my great mate, TK North. When did you realize you wanted to do photography as a living? Great question, um, bro. When I realized I wanted to do it as a living, I've been doing it now for about, as a living, like really like comfortable with my income and I'm not worrying about, when money's coming in and things like that, it was, it's been basically about 18 months now where I've been really, really comfortable. But when I realized that I wanted to do photography as a living, I it was through Mitch Lally. So when I first... I've known Mitch now for basically since I was eight years old. But um, like a relationship, we were on and off <laughs> through that period. Uh, but basically when we uh, got back on was because of photography. Um, and you know, for a long period of time there, when we, when he was like, I guess, teaching me some photography stuff and also we were just hanging out, I knew he was a wedding photographer, but I didn't realize like his lifestyle. Uh, I just thought, yeah, this guy's just a wedding photographer. Yeah. 
whoop de doo But after like hanging out with him more and more and more, like after about six months or maybe a year, I realized, man, like this guy, this guy has like a pretty cool life. You know, he can holiday whenever he wants, as long as like he hasn't booked any weddings and things like that. But he doesn't have to tell anyone um, any of that stuff. Like, oh, can I leave? Can I do this? But basically, there was this one time where I took annual leave from my work or I, I think... Yeah, I was working full time and there was this one time where I took um, annual leave from my work and um, it was like two weeks. And during that annual leave, I like chilled at home. I didn't really go anywhere. And it was, oh, fuck. I think it was annual leave. Actually, it could have been, it could have actually been me getting made redundant from a company. Um, so yeah, basically losing my job, but I got a bit of a payout. So it was sweet. But I think I was like made redundant and I didn't work for about two months, I think. And um, during that two months, I was looking for other jobs, but I also got a pretty good payout. So like I was pretty comfortable with like money at the time. So I said, well, why don't I just try out being a photographer? Let me try this freelance thing out. And at the time, I wasn't getting much work, but I had enough money saved that I could like at least take two to three months off work. Anyway, so I was with Mitch nearly every day and we were like making YouTube videos, we were filming stuff, we were um, taking photos, we were doing heaps of cool things. And um, during that time, I was going to go back to work. And I remember when I was with Mitch and taking photos and filming and doing all these things, waking up really early in the morning uh, for like a morning mission uh like 4 a.m and then would come home afterwards have breakfast and then i like chill all day and then in the afternoon we might take more photos we we're doing really cool things like we we're doing a lot of things that i would never do unless it was a weekend i was doing them like on a tuesday wednesday or thursday and i was loving it i was frothing it and it was so good and then basically i i got a job because i was running out of cash and i got the, got a new like full-time job and it was been maybe I started working and then it's been like two weeks or three weeks. And I remember Mitch messaged me and he goes, bro, you need to go freelance. And I thought <laughs> he meant like, you should go freelance as in like, yeah, you're good enough to go freelance, which he probably meant that. But what he really meant was he wanted to hang out more, I reckon. Um, but he wanted to like hang out with someone that was doing photography and things like that. So like help each other film YouTube videos and, th and I realized at that point, I was like, you know what? Like, this is why I want to be a full-time photographer. This is why I want to, like, do photography as, as a living. So I try to figure out, like, how can I make money off photography? So I was doing YouTube, doing weddings, things like that, doing restaurants, shooting restaurants, shooting heaps of different stuff, portraits, paying, charging people for things like that. Uh, but yeah, that's basically when I realized that was probably about two and a half years ago now um but yeah that was cool good question brother i hope i answered that right i got distracted i had a couple of people giving me phone calls then but yeah cool cool one more question actually this one just popped up here what's something you have learned as an entrepreneur now i'm not an entrepreneur i don't even know how to pronounce that yeah but i guess if you want to change it to like what's something you have learned as a photographer or somebody that has different types of income at once oh this is from uh, a good homie uh tavita um he's a videographer photographer i've never met him before but he is a really really good guy really check him out but yeah so what is something you learned as a photographer um or in my field is i learned this off actually a really good friend um seventh era i learned it from him so liam uh shout out to you bro probably won't listen to this but he his thing it's on his instagram he said it to me when he was up here in queensland it's like just don't think and just do just do what you know just do that's it that's basically it. whatever you have on your mind just do don't worry about what people think don't worry about what your friends think just do and when you have that mindset um and you just do a lot of good things happen because you will learn something if it doesn't work out you've learned it that's great. You learned it. Now you can fix it. Now you can problem solve and fix it and make it better. Or if you really didn't like it, you'll know. But at least you tried it. But if it does work out, which majority of the time it does work out, then awesome. You'll like love it. You'll be happy. You won't be like, oh my God, like 
I wish I did it six months ago. I wish I did it one week ago. Um, the more time you worry about it, the more time you think about it, that means that you're just wasting time because you could be doing something else. And the more you think about it, the more you just question everything. And um, so, yeah, don't think, just do. Shout out to Liam, shout out to 7th Era for that. But that's, yeah, that's one thing I've learned is just do it because if you don't do it, nobody's going to do it for you. Um, but that's 45 minutes, guys. That's a that's pretty long, me talking shit. Hopefully, you guys are still listening and not falling asleep. You know, your heads are rolling back like babies, probably. Um, but yeah, thanks, everyone. Thanks for listening to the potty. I will have another one like this, hopefully. Give me some feedback, guys. But yeah, I'll have another one like this probably in the next week or two. Uh, but more episodes with other creative people coming out soon. Uh, thank you very much, guys. I'll see you guys, or I will hear from you guys, or you will hear from me in the next podcast. Let's go. See you later. It's been real.